I spoke a bit about the I-1, and I want to speak a little bit more about certain medias that the I-1 is not going to be applicable. So for most front-lit banners, adhesive vinyls, canvases, the I-1 is perfect. You can do the entire thing on board the printer. Now certain materials, like fabric for example. Fabric, when you put the uh, ink collectors into the th printer on a 360 or a 370, it's going to say NA for not applicable if you go to the color calibration tab. You'll also see the same thing for the profile tab. That means that we know that if you're putting those collectors on that we're not going to get an accurate enough read with this on that kind of soft textile. So we discourage using the I1 for those purposes. It wouldn't benefit anyone if we're reading uh, color and the accuracy was too low for us to convincingly build a good solid profile. So what we're asking in those cases is just use the media locator. The media locator is an excellent tool. It has an enormous range of fabrics and the generics in the media locator work very well. Now if you insist on doing your own presets for a fabric and there's nothing wrong with that, you'd probably then use a tool like an I1 I.O., like a table or an external device to read textiles. There are some workflows on the printer, and it's a little unusual, but it will allow you to read um, a fabric, say a coated fabric, through an adhesive vinyl workflow. I know that sounds a little strange because clearly fabric and adhesive vinyl are different things, but in a little, another video, I'm going to show you how to do that, and I've done that myself, and it does work pretty effectively. Other things that can pose some problems using the I-1 are certain types of papers. For example, if you print on some papers, what happens is the paper cockles. That is, it has sort of a wave to it. And when it comes back into the print path to read it, the I-1 can't quite go smoothly across it, and you get a little scratching. That's not ideal, and in those cases, we would recommend that you do it on an offline device. Also, as I mentioned earlier, backlits, you can't use a refractive spectrophotometer to do what you need for a transmissive spectrophotometer. A Barbieri, for example, is a transmissive spectrophotometer. In those instances, we'd recommend that you use the presets that are available in the media locator. There's many of them, and they're also very good. There are some cases where canvas will not quite read, or you'll hit calibrate and it continues to say recommended, or you hit ICC read and it continues to say generic instead of custom. In those cases, the OMAS is telling you, or the printer is telling you that it can't quite read that. Something isn't right. Now you can try it again, and usually I'll give it two, and in some cases, three attempts. After that, it clearly is not able to see it. Um, some materials are just have such an irregular surface that we feel that it's not going to be accurate enough, and in those cases, it will reject it. If uh, that does happen, you can either use a preset, something on the media locator, or you can do it offline. So there are some exceptions to the OMAS, but I think the, or to the I1, but I think the vast majority of medias that you're going to put in there will work beautifully. Also, if you do not have an I-1, like on a 310 or a 330, the 110, those do not possess I-1s. And in those cases, what you have is a line sensor that works as a densitometer. You can still do the calibration for medias, and the calibration is key. You can do the first two steps, and we're going to go over the steps in another video. It's the only step you're not able to do is the one where you build the ICC preset. The ICC profile, you require the spectro. And we'll go over that in another video to explain what the steps are and how they work. So those printers still have a tremendous versatility by doing the onboard density readings and creating a color calibration. Mm -hmm.